I think the UK is, first of all, suffering from the same global issue as everyone else. That's the imbalance between supply and demand and natural gas caused by you know, long, cold winters in Asia and Europe, which meant that we were still depleting storage when we should have been filling it at the end of winter. Uh, on top of that, there's been a colossal record demand in Asia with the bounce back from the pandemic. But, uh, and then geopolitical issues, which particularly affect Northern Europe uh, between Russia and, and, and European countries. But I think the um, UK is then compounded by having outages. So for example, I think four or five of our major nuclear reactors have been out of action. That's the equivalent of five million homes worth of electricity not being generated. On top of that, there's a major interconnect with France, which is equivalent to about a million homes worth of electricity that we can't import at times of need. So the UK is kind of quite isolated in its electricity market, and the prices there are now very dependent on gas as well. So we're using gas not only to heat homes, but also, you know, as a major source of electricity generation when we shouldn't be using quite so much. Well, Greg, when I look at the structure of the UK market, certainly it raises question. Large UK energy suppliers have the luxury of being able to buy forward in the gas and power markets to hedge against rising prices. Smaller suppliers don't have that luxury. And of course, what we've seen is a number of these smaller suppliers go under. Do you think that the government needs to do more to intervene? Is there a problem with the current market structure in the UK? I think we've all been surprised at the extent to which uh, some companies were, you know, buying short and selling long. And um, I don't think that's down to size. Uh, I think Octopus was able to hedge its uh, supplies, you know, when we had 20, 30, 40,000 customers. Uh, today, we've got over 3 million. Uh, so you really can hedge all the way up the scale. I think what it is, is those companies were, uh, you know, uh, hoping, keeping their fingers crossed that if prices fell, they could scoop up customers with a bargain. If prices rose, then they'd be able to batten down the hatches and see through a crisis. But this crisis is so great, no one could weather it if they weren't hedged. That is a problem. And I, and I think the same sort of stress test of expecting banking maybe ought to be applied in energy as well. So is it uh, uh, the onus of the regulator to make the kind of changes, like potentially institute stress tests like we've seen in the financial sector? I, is it down to them to prevent something like this from happening again? Yeah, I think uh, essentially what we've seen here is uh, there is definitely a need uh, to prevent the kind of turmoil, which, of course, can be sorted out. Companies like ours you know, are calmly dealing with the issue. But it's certainly the, the questions that it poses for customers, the lack of confidence in the market, are a problem. And it, we don't need masses of onerous legislation, of regulation. We just need some sort of simple, lightweight stress tests and perhaps um, uh, yeah, fit and proper people tests are being introduced. Uh, so I don't think we want to stall competition when competition is between companies that are behaving responsibly. That's been fantastic for consumers. You know, we've put billions of pounds a year back in consumers' pockets through a highly competitive market. What we now need to do is make sure that competition is on the basis of, uh, you know, our companies being well run and do they have low cost because they're efficient in using technology rather than because they're kind of gambling in the market.